Hello, welcome back to our Palpaya demonstrations. I'm Kim Beaton, and today we're going to be showing you how to do floating rocks. This is a floating rock. It's also a planter. It's also a way to make train dioramas. So if you want to do dioramas that could even last outdoors, this is an excellent method to use them with. We've used false train vegetation for the edges, but it looks really quite sweet. You could put Boston ferns in here and it would look fine. So today I'm going to show you the core of how to do rocks. To do that, I need to describe to you why rocks look the way they do. Rocks have an anatomy, they have structure, and it's crystalline. You would normally call it a facet, but we call it a plane. And here's a perfect example of two beautiful rocks, one highly textured and one not so much. This is actually quite smooth. You can see there's a flat area here. Then it bumps down to another flat area. This is one plane, that's another, so's that. That angle by which the planes connect, that's, that identifies which rock you have. If that plane is this way, it's basalt. If it's really sharp, it's obsidian. Um, and depending on the rock you want to build, you identify that shaping. And it's absolutely uniform from one rock of this nature to the next. So you can see that angle, that angle, this angle, it's all the same. Now this particular one is called Gray Wacky. This is also Gray Wacky, but this one's been attacked by saltwater corrosion. And so a lot of the calcium in it has actually been burned away, but it's still faceted. See, you can just make out the planes this way, and they're always that same angle between them. This has been burned away by the attack of salt water, and so you add a lot more texture. You can achieve both results with Paltaya. For those of you who've worked with Paltaya before, you see that we've made a tinfoil armature. Now this tinfoil armature is based on a rocks and this is the orientation we'll sculpt it in. But watch, I do this. Ta-da! There's our floating rock. As you can see, I've identified certain masses around the rock the same way that I've identified them here. We'll plane off the rocks as we sculpt it, but all of them are there. Now we're going to put Paltea clay on this and sculpt up some rocks. starting to look like a rock. I will say right now this is a fantasy rock. This is the kind of rock you would see in Wiley e. Coyote. When you're doing plain structures they have to match through the rock. This is intended to be a floating rock and so literally the plain structure is here, it rotates, it's there, it rotates, it's there. 
Real rocks don't do that, but floating rocks do. And it makes it so that it is handsome as it rotates in space. I've established most of my planes at this point. You can see it's very, very faceted looking. I will continue to do that and every once in a while add little bits of random texture and detail. And it'll pick it up really beautifully. But I will also pierce in tiny details, itsy bitsy rocks. This is where it gets fun. At this point, I've been, I've mixed the clay, we're at about 20 minutes. I now have an hour and a half to just pick in all the careful details and lovingly get the surface brought up. So have fun, enjoy yourself at this point. Here we are. We're near the end of our sculpture. All of our facets are there. It does look like a rock. It's certainly fantasy rock, but still, it's a, it's a good looking rock. We've pierced all of our detail in. Most of our tool marks are gone. And we are now going to prepare this for curing. Water wants to evaporate off this, and we have to prevent that from happening for the first day. So we take a plastic bag, and we cover this sculpture overnight, like so. Now tomorrow, the next day, you have to uncover this, get a damp cloth, cover it like so, and then recover it in plastic. Leave that for about five days, and it will become immensely strong and capable of withstanding any kind of weather. So make sure that you cure your sculpture correctly, and at the end of it, you will have a marvelous little hanging rock for your garden. Hello again. This is our floating rock sculpture. This is what we were working on just a few days ago. Now you can see it's sopping wet because I've just pulled it out of a bucket of water. At this point, it looks pretty good. We've got a rock that's floating beautifully in the sky, but there's no way that we can actually hang it. And that's what this last little bit is for. So again, we've got it wet, so it's going to connect beautifully. The inside, we cleared all that tin foil out of there, and that surface in there is incredibly corrugated. We, that's so what we need for this. So, piece of tin foil. I want something that sits in here about halfway. But more importantly, it has to come up from the edges and then go flat across. That allows you to tie this invisible cable on anywhere you want so you find your balance point. This cable is 150 pound test fishing line and it's beautifully invisible. That's about halfway. That looks pretty good. I've mixed up a batch of paltaya. First thing I'm going to do is pack inside the edges and aggressively connect it to that texture on the inside edge. I'm going to roll a tube. Oh, yay! looks pretty straight up and down. It's hanging right, like that. It's in the middle. And when that cures, that can hold the weight of the sculpture. Now we're going to put this back into water tomorrow. We still have to keep this wet. So we will wrap it in plastic. Tomorrow we'll plunge it back into water. And five days from now, that bar will be very strong and we need it to be. So thank you again for joining me and we have now made an awesome floating rock.